my name is Dr. Laura Davis and this is a short video lecture on Sandra Cisneros story called My Lucy Friend Who Smells Like Corn. So I'll just start off by saying a few words about the author herself. So Sandra Cisneros is a Chicana writer. She's a Mexican American writer that is, um, who lives on the west coast of the United States, kind of in the southern west around the San Diego area. Um, the Mexican-American border around that San Diego Tijuana area is a contested space and has a long colonial history. And if you're interested in learning more about that, um, another Chicana writer named Gloria N. Zaldúa has written a book called Borderlands where she um, discusses that issue extensively. So many Chicana writers such as Gloria N. Zaldúa and such as Sandra Cisneros um, write about this contested kind of border space between um, Mexico and the United States. And these writers also write about complex identities that emerge from these borderland areas. Um, so these identities are kind of a mixture of American and Mexican identities and really emerging from that is kind of um, another identity, its own identity, which is the Chicana identity. Um, and so Sandra Cisneros' work, among others, um, who write about the same sort of issues, um, is about these kinds of identities. Um, and uh, also, she also takes ta she also takes up gender issues in her work. Um, Sandra Cisneros is most famous for her book um, called The House on Mango Street. Um, it's a great novel published in 1984, and it was also her first uh, book. And um, she is a graduate of the Iowa Writers' Workshop, which is a very prestigious and well-known um, writing program in Iowa in the United States. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to talk about the, the very short story called My Lucy Friend Who Smells Like Corn. And I think it's a beautiful, brilliant story um, that reads in many ways more like poetry than it does like a story. So you'll know from the um, from reading it that, and it is only a two page story, it's very short. Um, and as soon as you start reading it, you realize that the narrative style, the narrative voice is very unusual. And she really writes in this story in a kind of stream of consciousness way. So in other words, she writes kind of as the mind is thinking. And that first paragraph you can see, and actually throughout, um, there's these kind of long sentences um, that, that few sentences are kind of fused together as if one is just thinking in one's mind and these sentences are all kind of coming out together as one. Um, so that's a kind of, in a way, I think she's writing in that uh, stream of consciousness style. The other thing that's evident right from the beginning and throughout is that it's a child narrator. So you get that kind of child, um, that kind of child language. And I think that also comes in um, to play in the sentence structure and the stream of consciousness. Um, style. But there's also other hints that let us know that it is a child narrator speaking. So um, let's see, the story begins um, with the narrator, the unnamed narrator speaking about her friend Lucy. And um, she says right away that she smells like corn, like Frida Bedita chips. So hints already in the first sentence of this kind of Chicana culture and an American culture, and maybe even the kind of place where they are in the, in the Southwestern United States. Um, we know that it, um, she's a child when she talks about leaning over the paper cut, gir cut dolls with her friend Lucy. So when we're leaning over these paper cut dolls and you can imagine them, you know, cutting out those you know, the strings of dolls that are made of paper. And I'd like to suggest that this image is, um, that's introduced in the very first sentence of the, of the story is an image that carries throughout and is actually pretty significant. The whole two pages, the whole story revolves around this image of the paper cut dolls, which represent Lucy and her friend um, themselves. Um, and they come into play later when we see the laundry imagery and the dressing up and so on, because you dress up paper dolls too, right? You know the kind I mean, you dress them up with paper dresses and things like that. So this is a central image that we're introduced to in the very beginning of the story. And uh, we also know it's a child narrator because in that very first paragraph, we also get them playing with marbles. And I want you to notice um, in the first paragraph of the story and throughout 
the imagery um, that comes across and the way that Cisneros juxtaposes beautiful and violent imagery. So she kind of um, mixes this imagery that is on the one hand kind of playful and beautiful and on the other hand kind of violent. And in some instances, it's actually both in the very same moment. So this is where I think her writing is, is very poetic. Um, as it draws upon multiple connotations and meanings simultaneously. So here are some examples, again, just within the first paragraph alone. Um, so she talks about, as I mentioned, the paper cut doll. And that's a playful, cute, beautiful image of doll paper cut dolls. And you can imagine it's kind of a, an innocent, childlike image of, of children playing with these paper dolls and cutting them out. And yet we have the word cut there. And I think there's a sense of, and we don't really see it yet, but as we see the other violent imagery throughout the story, I think that the fact that they are cut is um, meant to be a violent image as well as a playful one in the same instance. In that first paragraph as well, she talks about, um, she talks about the marbles, right? And the beautiful colors of the marbles. I think she says the blue stays on her hands, you know, from the shiny, you can imagine it kind of going through to the hand. Um, the green caterpillar, the, the marbles that are clear with a little green in them. But then she says it's like the juice of bugs when they hit the windshield, right? A violent image again, we're talking about guts splatting on a windshield. And she talks about the yellow blood of butterflies. It's a beautiful image of butterfly, but then we get the yellow blood, this sense of the butterfly being squished. So this mixture of images is really interesting here and we can we can think if we want of, uh, about what the significance in a larger sense, but I think for now, just to, to notice that mix of beautiful and violent imagery throughout is important. Now, moving on to the rest of the story, she talks about, um, her, for one thing, Lucy's many sisters. I think there's eight of them that she names them all, and it's interesting that the narrator herself isn't named, but she names all of Lucy's sisters. And she talks about doing laundry. And I think she's talking about Lucy's mother doing laundry here for all of these girls in the family. And she says, and this is a quote, rolling out all the stiff and twisted and flat like paper. Okay, so she's rolling out all the laundry flat like paper. So again, it's an image that brings us back to the paper doll imagery. And so imagine this clothesline of flattened um, clothes that are lined up on the, on the line um, like, pa like the paper dolls. And um, then in that same paragraph where she's talking about the laundry, she says that the mother's hand got caught in the machine. Okay, and it got kind of flattened. So again, we get that violent imagery amongst the domestic kind of nice imagery of the clothesline. We get the violent imagery of the hand being caught and being flattened like paper as if she herself is becoming like one of these paper cut out dolls. I can't, Again, this is kind of jumping ahead, but I can't um, help but think that this, these paper dolls, these clothes that are kind of representative of a, a kind of public persona in a sense, are also representing the individual identities and perhaps the violence that has happened to um, individuals of that culture. So that's just kind of to extend the significance and the, the metaphor that's coming forth through the story. Um, and again, throughout we get other images that are that are juxtaposed in interesting ways, right? Because the narrator talks about having to wear a nice dress, but then in the next, in the very same sentence, she talks about being on a pissy mattress. Okay, so we've got this kind of cute, beautiful imagery, and then the kind of ugly, uh, poverty-ridden imagery at this in the same moment almost. And I think later in the story, as we move through the two pages, we get this sense that. Um, the narrator is jealous of Lucy, right? So she says she wishes she had these sisters. So there's a sense of loneliness on the part of, um, of the uh, narrator and almost a kind of possessiveness, right? So she's in the space of Lucy. She's leaning over her for the paper dolls. She's scratching her mosquito bites, which um, this is later in the story um, on the second page but she's th that scratch of the mosquito bites could be a moment of affection when you're kind of grooming each other and scratching each other, but it's this intimate moment, or it could be a violent moment, right? And there's self-violence too, where she takes her own scabs and picks them off and eats them. It's a kind of 
just like the eating of the dog food. There's some weird consuming imagery in here too. Uh, but that there's a kind of self-violence at the same time that it's just a, it's a kid-like um, thing to do in a sense. Um, and when she says, um, at the end too, she says uh, about Lucy, she says, me with my arm around your neck. Again, is that a moment of affection because they're best buddies? It's her friend Lucy that smells like corn? Or is it a kind of violent image or image where she's grabbing her, her neck around, you know, with her arm because she's she's violent and she's um, she's jealous of her friend? So again, I think that is intentionally left open by um, Sandra Cisneros, that, that, um, that tension between affection and, and um, violence or jealousy in this case. And the end is really interesting because I think it ends on a kind of um, an image of luck and an image of hope, which is really interesting that she just kind of leaves it off. There's no easy answers to this. Um, she, wants to, she wants to leave those tensions there. She wants to leave us thinking. But at the end of the story, she returns to the, the image of the paper cut doll. And then she also says that her and Lucy being kids as they are, six or seven years old, says waiting, we're waiting for our teeth to fall and money, right? And I love how that's phrased in that childlike stream of consciousness kind of narration that she uses, but also she's waiting for teeth to fall. She's waiting for some luck to fall. She's waiting for the money to come mysteriously, for the fairy to come and give them something. And I think metaphorically, there's a sense there that they're both of them are waiting for a better life or for waiting for their luck to come, waiting for something better um, to happen. So beautiful, um, poetic story, um, violent uh, imagery juxtaposed with beautiful imagery, um, feelings of the narrator toward uh, her friend Lucy, which could be seen as both intimate and affectionate, and on the other hand as jealous and possessive and even violent. And I think that, that Cisneros leaves us kind of hanging with all of this imagery um, to think about it and to think about maybe some of the larger um, cultural um, questions about cultural identities and what has, been, what has happened to those cultural identities in terms of um, the violence enacted against them. So thank you much, very much for listening uh, to my short video lecture on Sandra Cisneros, my Lucy friend who smells like corn. Thank you.